Hi everyone, I am Eddie Baskoro. I am very happy to have you in our class MA3051, Introduction to Graph Theory. This course is for undergraduate mathematics program at the Institute of Technology, Bandung. Let me start by giving you the information regarding this course. This course is for credits, that means that we have four hour lectures in a week. And the outcome of this course is in the following four abilities. We are going to use these two books for our course. One is a book by Bondi and Murthy. This is a very famous book, I think, uh, for uh, graph theory courses. And then the second one, also a very nice book uh, by Hartfield and Winger. And the sequence of lectures in our course will follow the book of Bondi and Murthy. For the student evaluations, it will be based on these three activities. First, exam. We have uh, two exam, mid and final exam, and will be uh, fifty percent for the for the weight of the evaluation, and then individual task and presentation. This is uh, twenty percent, and group discussions three or four times. This is will be this will be thirty percent. In this course, we discuss the fundamental concepts of graph theory rigorously and the applications of graph to real-world problems. And this course covers these seven topics. Yeah? First, we are going to give you graph and subgraph concept, and then we discuss about three, and then connectivity, a notion will be discussed and then we are going to give you traversability uh, a notion and then matching edge coloring and the last one will be on planarity now we are entered to the first chapter graph and subgraph this chapter will consist of five uh, sections Start by introduction, isomorphism, and then matrices, degree, and subgraph. Then we talk about walk, connectivity, and cycle. And the last one, we will discuss about the application. One of the application of graph. This is uh, on shortest path problems. Before we giving you the formal definition of a graph. Let us consider several examples here. The first example, uh, suppose in mathematics department, there are four professors with their expertise in teaching as follows. First professor, Eddie, like teaching discrete and or the combinatorics. And then Felia is good in teaching algebra and co or combinatorics. Hendra is keen in teaching statistic or combinatoric. Prima can teach very well in algebra, statistic, or discrete uh, mathematics. Figure in on the right side, describe this situation. The problem is to assign each person to teach his or her expertise subject. One can see the advantage of using this diagram in this figure as uh, a tool to, to solving this problem. This diagram is an example of a graph. Another example with which we are familiar is a root map. This root map here is greatly simplified. 
this diagram is also a graph. It shows several alternative ways of driving from the city of Jombang, this is my hometown, to go to city of Malang in Java. Next, chemists use diagrams to picture molecules and this diagram are also a graph. For example, here, butane and isobutane has the same formula but different structures. This and this are different structures. Atoms with black colors, like in here or here, are carbon and the red ones are oxygen and the white one are hydrogen. And these molecules can be represented as a graph, like these pictures and also these pictures as well. The following diagram or a graph represent aspirin with the label for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen have been left out. And this is also a graph. In the study of lattices and Boolean algebra, graph rise as diagrams of these structures. The figure on the left side shows the lattice of subsets of the set of 2, 3, and 5. And then the figure on the right side shows the prime decompositions of the integer 864. Graph theory is also used in designing printed circuits for the use in electronic devices, like here, and the planarity concept in a graph will be beneficial for this purpose. By using graph representation, we could also show the nodes in some networks which are very, very fluent, fluent shown. For example, in this situation, we show uh, nodes or person who most influential in Russian uh, uh, politics. With the graph, we could also analyze the relationships between people. If the nodes represent people and the edges represent their relations. In the, nest, in the networks. So, from several examples above, we could see that every network in any kind is just simply a graph. Now, let us go through the formal definition of a graph. A graph G is a system consisting of non-empty set V and a possibly empty set E of unordered pairs of element of V. The element of V will be called vertices or nodes of the graph and then the elements of E will be called the edges of the graph. If V is finite, then G we call a finite graph. Otherwise, G infinite graph. A graph G is called simple if G has no lobes and no multiple edges. Yeah? We are going to use this notation, new G is the number of vertices of a graph G and then epsilon G is the number of edges in a graph G. Yeah. 
and g we call multiple graph if g has multiple edges and g we call pseudo graph if g with uh, multiple edges and loops now consider these two examples graph g with the vertex set v from v1 v2 up to v6 and then the edge set e uh, which is uh, the set of e1 up to e9 and uh, e1 up to e9 defined in this manner and then we have the second graph this is h with the vertex set is ab up abc up to f and then the edge set the set of h i j up to p and then the edge set defined like this uh, manner then in a we can draw the diagram of a graph G and in B we can draw the diagram of graph H. Of course there are many many ways of drawing these uh, diagrams. Yeah? This is only one of the example of drawing these two diagrams. If you V an edge in G then we call vertices u and v are incident with uh, h uv and vice versa yeah for example here we have uh, vertices a and d are incident with uh, an h j and also we have in this graph in uh, graph g for example here we have uh, v4 and v3 are uh, incident uh, with uh, h uh, e7 yeah? or we can say e7 incident with uh, v4 and with uh, v3 the vertices u and v are called adjacent if u u v uh, is an edge yeah? So uh, again, this is one of the example. B is adjacent to D because we have an edge here, yeah? but B is not adjacent to E because there is no edge from B uh, to E. An edge of uh, V uh, is called a loop on V. This is a loop, or this one is loop. As I said before, there is no unique way of drawing a graph. The relative positions of points representing vertices in the graph and lines representing edges have no significance. The matter is just the structure of the graph. For example, in C, we can have another diagram of graph G in A. So, this is the end of uh, section 1.0, and thank you.